so now here is the lesson for Friday. If you're doing it early, great. Um, it starts on page 128, so make sure you're open to 128, and we will get started here. So it says, once a quadratic equation is factored, we can use a zero product property to solve the equation. The zero product property states that if the product of two factors is zero, then one or both of the factors must be zero. Only makes sense. Um, so we are going to not only factor these um, quadratics, we are also going to solve them by setting the factors equal to zero. So for the first one, we are going to stick with the same system that we've been using. What we're going to do is multiply b squared by 15 to get 15b squared. Um, we need two numbers that multiply to this that add to 8. So that would be 3b and 5b. Multiply to 15b squared and add to 8. So now I'm going to split this up. b squared plus 5b plus 3b plus 15. So I just replaced the 8b with these two factors. Then I'm going to group it there and pull out the greatest common factor. In this case, it's b. So b plus 5 and 3b plus 5. So now we have the factors b plus 3 and b plus 5. We factored it like we did in the last lesson. The next step for the zero property is to set each of these equal to zero. So we set this equal to zero and this one equal to zero. And solve for b. So b equals negative 3 and b equals negative 5. Um, so we could use these brackets. We get negative 3 negative 5 as our solutions. Okay, and moving on to the next one. Um, same thing as before, we're going to multiply the first and last term to get 30f squared. We need two numbers that multiply to this that add to 17, like 15f and 2f. Multiply to 30 and um, add to 17. So now I'm going to have 10f squared plus 15f plus 2f, plus 3. Okay, group it. Going to pull out the greatest common factor. In this case, it is 5f. And I get 2f plus 3. And then here, I can't pull out any factors, so we're just going to use 1, 2f plus 3. So our two factors is 5f plus 1 and... 2f plus 3. Now the next step is to set each of these equal to 0. So we get 5f plus 1 equals 0 and 2f plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 1. So I get f equals negative 1 fifth and here 2f equals 3 divided by 2, and f equals negative 3 halves. So the two numbers in the back brackets will be negative 1 fifth and negative 3 halves. Okay, let's move on to the next one. It says solve for j by factoring um, this polynomial here. If you can focus, we'd be doing good. Okay, so 6 times 14. I can't do that in my head. It is 84j squared. Two numbers that multiply to this that add to negative 19 are negative 7j and negative 12j. So we get 6j squared. Then we'll replace the negative 19j with these two terms. I'm going to group this here. Turn this into a negative. And then I will pull out the greatest common factor here. The greatest common factor here is j. So I'm left with 6j minus 7. And then for this one, it is going to be um, negative 2. 6j minus 7. So then our terms are j minus 2 and 6j minus 7. So j minus 2, set that equal to 0. Solve for j j equals 2, and then 6j minus 7 equal to 0. Okay, 
j equals 7 sixths. So the brackets, you would have 2 and 7 sixths. Okay, and the next page. You know what? What we're going to do is instead of doing this problem, we're going to do a few of the homework problems. So let me pull those up here. Pause this. Okay, so I just wrote down some of the problems that you'll see on your homework. Here is the first one here, x squared plus 2x minus 3, and it's going to know, want to know the solutions to this. So just like we did, you would do x squared times negative 3 would be the negative 3x squared. We need two numbers that multiply to this and add to 2x, like 3x and negative 1x. That would multiply to this and add to 2. So we'll break it up into the two factors x squared plus, we have the 3x plus negative 1x minus 3, your factor here and here. Um, and then from here, we can pull out our greatest common factor, which is x, x plus 3. Um, here we can just pull out a negative 1, x plus 3. And our two factors, oh no, I'm not going to be able to fit it, is x minus 1 and x plus 3. If we were to set these both equal to 0, we would get x equals 1 and x equals negative 3. So our solution set would be 1 and negative 3. So that's what you would look for in the answer choices. Okay, the next one what we're going to do here is 2x squared times 10 would be 20x squared. Two numbers that multiply to this and add to 12 would be 10x and 2x. So I'm going to break this up. 2x squared plus 10x plus 2x plus 10. After it here. Pull out a 2x and a 2. I get 2x plus 2 and x plus 5. Then I can set both of these equal to 0. I get x equals 1 here. Where am I going to put it? x equals 1. And then this will equal x equals negative 5. So our bracket would have negative 5 and 1. Okay, and the next one I wrote down right here, x squared times 8 would be 8x squared. Okay, so this one here. We multiplied these two terms to get 8x squared. I need two numbers that multiply to this and add to negative 6. Like, four, two, oh, negative 4x and negative 2x would add to negative 6x and multiply to 8x squared. So we have 8x squared minus 4x minus 2x equal or plus 8. I'm going to group it here. x x minus 4 plus 2x, uh, we'll pull out the negative, x minus 4, and we'll get x minus 2 and x minus 4. 